this is Leslie Preddy here with Crafting with Found Objects, Dried Flowers in Three Parts. Part 1. Picking Your Objects Go for a walk or look around your property for interesting flowers and leaves. Look for colorful or interesting patterns in blooms, individual petals, and leaves. Take a bag and scissors with you and cut what you want to try to dry. Do this only when you are ready to start experimenting with the drying process as the petals may bruise and discolor if there is too much time between when you cut and when you dry. Remember to get permission before you cut anything and avoid a poisonous plants and don't pick anything that is too thick as you want something that is easy to flatten. Part 2. The Drying Process The supplies you will need for the drying process, a microwave, a heavy flat microwave safe dish, preferably something ceramic, scissors, kitchen cardboard like old cereal boxes cut into the size that is the same as the microwave safe dish, paper, paper towels, and remember be patient. It's going to take trial and error to figure out how much time it takes to dry things without burning them or discoloring them and all microwaves are different so be ready to experiment. Start with cardboard, then your paper, paper towel, Flowers flattened, after your flowers place another paper towel, another piece of paper, another piece of cardboard, carefully place it in the microwave and then place your weight on top of it. Microwave on low for 30 seconds to 1 minute 30 seconds. Take it out, open it up, let it cool off to room temperature. Once they are completely dry, place them carefully in a book or other heavy object for two days. Part 3. Create. While you wait two days for your flowers to finish drying and press, consider the tools that you might need. A pair of scissors and or a cutting board, ruler, some writing tools, tape. So look around the house and see what you have and grab those materials. After you've collected your supplies and while you continue to wait, what are you going to make? Consider your audience. Would they like a bookmark? Are they a reader? Or are you a reader? Are you making something for yourself? You should have plenty of materials to make more than one object with your pressed flowers. Is it going to be something fresh and new? So do you need some paper to make that bookmark? And then you might need some tape or maybe you want to make something that it looks like it has a frosted look to it. So instead of using paper, maybe wax paper instead for a frosted look to that bookmark. Would you rather use your pressed flowers to repurpose something? Take an old picture frame and replace the picture and put your pressed flowers in there. Take an old card, cut the front off of the card, put your pressed flowers in and use the quotes and turn the card into a bookmark or a new card take a kitchen cardboard, cut the pieces off so then you have this strip and in this white piece you could put your pressed flowers in there and then in that one strip you've got a bookmark or maybe you want to decorate the jar with the pressed flowers and then there's a keepsake jar that can be used or a resource or tool jar that can then have pressed flowers on the outside a takeout container that has been cleaned up or an old uh, container from the kitchen as well that also has been cleaned up. So again, in the two days you are waiting for your pressed flowers to be prepared, what can you find around the house that you could repurpose while you are looking for those? If you're going to do something that you can include writing on, think about special quotes that you use as a family that you could put on the object that you are creating. After two days have gone by, take your pressed flower kits out of your book, open them up, and carefully remove them. Try to be as careful as possible when taking your dried objects out, as they will be very brittle. And after all of that hard work and all of those days of waiting, you don't want to break them. So be cautious. Lay them on a new piece of paper and carry them carefully to your workspace to begin your creations. 
give you an example of something you could do, I'm going to make a bookmark. So I cut a strip out of my Hostess Cupcakes box. I used actually just the whole spine and I liked the white backing. I'm going to make dashes along the edge to make a border. And I will continue this along all four sides. And you can do anything that you want to decorate and add flair to what you're doing. There could be hearts or curly cues or swirls. Look around your home and consider ways that you can add a personal touch to things that you create with other materials that you find in your home. So I have this piece ready. I have my pressed flowers and leaves ready. And now I have my tape. I'm going to pull a strip of tape and remember this is perfect for using found supplies around the house. We're just using packing tape that I had around the house. And I cut a strip of tape. I'm rolling it and curling it under so that it's sticky side up. And so I've taped it down. Here is my bookmark. And I'm going to place my pieces on this tape so it sticks to the tape. So I'm going to pick out the flower that I want. I've already decided my pattern. So I looked at my pieces and I figured out what I want to do. And I just have to lay it down. And I'm going to lay it upside down because remember, we're going to turn this around. It's going to stick. So then it's going to be face up when we're done. So I have to turn it upside down. It's my centerpiece. Remember, this is the back side, so nobody's going to see the messy back side. Try to be as gentle as possible. As you see, the objects are delicate. And now that's all I want on there. I'll lay this on top. Lay another strip of tape on top. Take my ruler, try and get all the excess air out. And if you decide that you're going to do that on this side, be very careful. Use a flat edge so that you don't damage anything. And finish trimming off the extra tape. I have my first masterpiece completed. I'm ready to make more because I still have more pieces. What did I make with my pressed flowers and materials that I had around my house? These are the pressed flowers and leaves that I still have left over, so I could still make some more if I wanted to. But I made a candy jar with uh, tape and leaves and an old spaghetti jar. I made a piece of art out of an old picture frame. I made a birthday card with some markers, an old card, leaves, and packing tape a bookmark with tape markers with wax paper from the kitchen so that it could be a frosted look markers a favorite quote from winnie the pooh now the question is what could you make for yourself and others this has been crafting with found objects with leslie the librarian